How's it going guys? Um, Matt here again with UBJ.com and in this video um, we're just going to quickly go over some basic eyebrow piercing info and aftercare. For the most part, your eyebrow piercing is gonna be about two to three months to heal. So two to three months, you don't touch it, you don't play with it, definitely don't spin it and rotate it, like none of that stuff, okay? Leave it alone, keep it totally stationary, all right? Um, with your eyebrow piercing, it, it is basically a surface piercing. So, you know, a lot of movement, um, excessive harsh cleaner, stuff like that, um, it's gonna really kind of break down or even dissolve away the tissue holding the piercing in, all right? Now, obviously you wanna keep that to a minimum and you don't want that to happen, so, no harsh cleaners and no moving jewelry, okay? And on that same token, also try really hard not to sleep on that side. Um, try and sleep on your other side. Just little things like that make a huge, huge difference as far as like healing eyebrow piercing. Another thing too is you notice with my eyebrows, um, some people when they heal them, it'll just be this thin little piece of skin, little sliver of skin there. Um, and then the bar just kind of flops around and hangs off it. When I pierce eyebrows, I like to pierce it till it looks like the balls just kind of glued right on there. The reason why, there's a couple reasons why their piercing might be so thin and the jewelry's just kind of hanging off of it. Um, one, it might have gotten pierced too shallow, but also two, um, maybe they moved it too much while it was healing or they used too harsh of a cleaner to clean it while it was healing. And then last thing on that same tip, uh, the jewelry you get pierced with, you always want to get pierced with like a curved bar. Okay, so a curved barbell, never a ring or anything of that nature. The rings, they just have too much bulk on them. And also the diameter of the ring, the circumference is too tight. And so what it does, it puts a lot of pressure on that piercing, which once again is just basically like a surface piercing and causes it to migrate a lot and heal this little sliver of, of tissue there. Um, the curved bars tend to stay really, really stationary. There's not much weight to them um, and they don't get bumped and knocked nearly as much as like a, a ring or a captive bead ring does while it's healing. Now, what should you clean it with? So just like any other piercing, you only want to clean it with salt water and you want to do salt water soaks for the cleaning. There's a couple ways to go about it. First off, I know we've talked about this a lot in previous videos, but we'll go over it again. You want to do the salt water soak. So go to the grocery store. You're going to get a gallon of distilled water. All right. So distilled water, it's in the drinking water section. Any grocery store has it. So um, it's pretty easy, really cheap, super affordable. Okay. Once you have that gallon of distilled water from there, go to the salt section get like some non iodized or all natural sea salt but you want a pure sea salt okay and a really good way to tell if it's the right sea salt well for one if the label says non iodized um, or if you read the ingredients list the only ingredient on that salt should be sea salt all right so pretty simple pretty easy now take both those items home when you get home it is four teaspoons of the salt to the one gallon of water Okay, so four to one, all right? Four teaspoons to the gallon. You shake that up, that gives you a big jug to keep around the house, all right? Now, once you have that mixed up, store it around the house, and once or twice a day, take like a coffee cup or a shot glass, all right? So always glass or porcelain, never paper or plastic. And you're gonna take that glass, you're gonna fill it up with a salt water solution. You're gonna microwave that for a few seconds. So you just want it to be like body temperature, all right? So body temperature, touch it, make sure it's you know lukewarm, body temp. Every microwave is kind of vary a little bit. So you, know, you just gotta figure it out the first couple times you do it. Uh, take that glass, tilt your head forward, dunk your eyebrow in there, and just kind of submerge it and let it soak for a few minutes. Now, all of our faces are different. Some people, you just might not be able to submerge that piercing in there and get it to soak, okay? Um, it is kind of a funky area or a funky spot to soak. Now, the second best way to do that would be the exact same thing where you take that coffee cup, fill it up with the salt water solution, microwave for a few seconds, you want barely body temperature, and you're gonna take a paper towel or a clean washcloth, dunk it in that warm salt water solution, drape it over the piercing, and let it soak, all right? Now, the suggested time is seven to 15 minutes. Seven minutes or so, 15 minutes, you know, if you got the time, um, just hold it there and let it soak. Same thing with the coffee cup seven to 15 minutes, okay? So one or the other. Just know actually submerging the piercing in the salt water solution is by far the more superior method. But like I said, it is tricky. If you can't manage to get it to, to submerge, do a compress, okay? So you're just compressing that paper, cloth, or paper towel or clean washcloth on there, seven to 15 minutes and kind of let it do its job, all right? 
really important, don't ever use like uh, Q-tips or cotton balls for your, your soaks, okay, or your compresses. Even like just to clean them off or anything like that nature, of that nature, don't use Q-tips or cotton balls, all right? The fibers tend to get lodged and wrap around the jewelry, cause a lot of issues, a lot of problems. There you have it, guys. I got piercing 101, so basically just leave them alone, let them heal, do saltwater soaks, and you should be able to um, heal that no problem at all.